Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to tell you what I would do if I had osteoporosis. So before we can solve a problem we have to clearly define the problem. The diagnostic label osteoporosis means that we're losing bone density. We can see this by breaking down the word osteo being bone and porosis being porous. Porous means less dense. So we have a condition of reduced bone density. My belief when it comes to health problems is that symptoms are indicators of dysfunction. So we want to take a look at how the bones become dense in the first place and try to implement strategies around dysfunction that may be occurring in some of these areas. So the first and most easy step, and if you haven't been doing this, this one alone might fix osteoporosis for you, is to take vitamin D and vitamin K2. We have a study here that shows that combined therapy with vitamin K2 and D3 for 24 months markedly increased bone mineral density and it's also worth noting that this achievement requires both nutrients there are plenty of studies out there looking at just vitamin d and just vitamin k2 and they don't have the same results vitamin d and k2 work together synergistically so it's really important we combine them in this approach why do we need vitamin d and vitamin k2 in this situation the way to think about it is that vitamin d and vitamin k2 are like signaling molecules many of these signaling molecules have several different jobs for example vitamin d is an immunomodulator it strongly influences your circadian rhythm and your ability to sleep at night and to feel energized during the day but the thing we're really looking at here are its signaling abilities with regards to calcium so these two molecules together Together, basically tell the calcium in your blood to move into your bones so if you don't have enough of these vitamins you can take all of the calcium supplements that you want but it isn't going to do anything because you don't have this signaling function enabled when we look at supplementing vitamin D and k2 based on the fact that they do function like hormones in your body we want to make sure that we have a gradual introduction and that we're taking them at appropriate times of the day so vitamin D we would normally synthesize from sun exposure so we want to make sure that we take it in the morning Morning, ideally before the maximum peak of sun for the day. We most definitely do not want to be taking it before you go to bed. If you take it right before bed, we're basically chemically signaling your body that it's the middle of the day and you're going to find it really hard to sleep. When we're working on the dose, the thing we want to be really careful of is the immune activation. So if you have any gut or digestive problems, any chronic infections, if you've got some long COVID or anything like that, vitamin D is what signals your immune system to activate and to deal with these things. So if you go from being in a vitamin D deficiency and taking none to taking a massive dose you're going to overactivate your immune system and you're not going to be able to handle the fallout it's going to upset your stomach it might give you a cold or a flu-like symptoms some people even report bone and joint aches so it's really important that we work this dose up over time vitamin d and k2 are also fat soluble nutrients so it's really important that we take them with a meal that has some fat in it ideally we want to trigger a release of bile to support the digestion and absorption of that vitamin d now dosages are always personalized but i can give you some general rules of thumb so that you can experiment and figure out what works for you and if you're not sure talk to your doctor consult with your practitioner they'll help you figure it out so what i have found to consistently work the best is to start with 1000 ius of vitamin d and increase by approximately 1000 ius every week until we're able to reach between 7 and 10,000 ius when we're working on supplementing something like this it's really important that we test because if you go too far the other end if you go into vitamin d toxicity it actually causes osteoporosis and a whole bunch of other things like kidney stones that you really don't want so especially in this adjustment phase where we're addressing any potential deficiencies it's really important that we test at least once every three months to see where our levels are and where they're going i'll save you the extra brain power of trying to figure out the optimal ratio of d3 and k2 just look for a good vitamin d supplement that has both of them in and they're very likely in a fairly optimal ratio i will say you do want to make sure that the vitamin k2 is in the form of an mk7 complex so it will normally say that just next to it it will say vitamin k2 brackets mk7 complex as we're working on building this dose up gradually over time i really prefer to work with a liquid vitamin d supplement with a dropper to increase by 1000 ius every week if for some reason you're getting reactions or you're not feeling good you need to apply the goldilocks zone principle so just hold your dose just below what makes you feel bad hold it there for as long as you need to until you're able to increase as i said vitamin d behaves like a hormone in your body so it's going to affect an enormous amount of different processes but most commonly are cold flu and digestive upsets so if you've managed to find yourself a really good supplement it's going to look something like
like vitamin D, 1000 IUs per drop, vitamin K2 as MK7 complex, and the only other ingredients that you should have are some kind of carrier oil. This could be something like MCT oil, ideally, or olive oil is also acceptable. If you've managed to build your dose up and you're sitting at the seven or 10,000 IUs per day, you can also use a gel cap, but if you are gonna do that, I would suggest that you chew it and burst it in your mouth, because if the capsule doesn't open, then you don't get any of the benefits. The second step, the second thing I would do if I had osteoporosis is I would be consuming bone broth three times a day. It's kind of simple thinking, but the logic does work that if we make food using bones, there's a good likelihood it's gonna have many of the nutrients that we need to make bones. Bone broth is probably the most bioavailable source of calcium you can get. One little trick that you can use to get a little bit more calcium out of it is to make sure that when you're cooking your bones, you're cooking them with some kind of acid. So something like vinegar or lemon juice if you don't have it. The acids will bind to the alkaline minerals in the bones and help draw them out. And the calcium being bound to these acids will also improve your digestion and absorption of these nutrients. It's also not just a about the calcium. The calcium is one really important part, but bone broth also gives us a really good source of collagen. So you probably don't know this, but your bones are actually made of collagen. They're a collagen matrix that calcium then comes into to calcify, to harden, to turn into stone. But bones aren't supposed to be brittle. They're supposed to be able to bend very slightly and flex. And it's the collagen that allows them to do this. So we've got the vitamin D and K2 signaling the calcium to go into the bones. We also need to make sure we have a healthy collagen source so our bodies can make this collagen matrix that we can then calcify and turn into bones. This doesn't have to be three cups of broth every day. You can be smart and sneak it in other things. For example, I've got a chicken soup cooking downstairs and that soup at the base has bone broth. So every time I have a meal of this soup, it counts as one of those cups of broth. The third thing I would do if I had osteoporosis is take betaine HCL. And this is especially true if you have any kind of digestive problems or if you're over 45 years old. In order for our body to take nutrients from the food that we eat and bring them into our body, we need the correct digestive machinery. And when we're looking at calcium, the most important thing is the acid in the stomach. Our bodies basically can't absorb any of the calcium we eat unless it's bound to an acid first and naturally in a healthy body we have very strong acid levels that are able to bind to these minerals this isn't just calcium this is also things like iron so if you're struggling with osteoporosis but you've also struggled with anemia or any kind of mineral deficiency in the past there's a really good likelihood that your stomach acid levels may be the common denominator in certain individuals especially as we age our acid levels can become reduced and therefore our ability to break down digest and absorb the nutrients in our food is also reduced so we're kind of hacking this point with the previous point by taking the bone broth cooked with vinegar. We're almost pre-digesting those nutrients so they're easier for us to absorb. But if you have low HCL levels, you're not going to be able to absorb calcium from all of your other foods, your dairy, your nuts and seeds, your leafy greens. All the calcium is just going to stay in your gut and be useless to you. The fourth thing I would do if I had osteoporosis is remove fluoride from my life as much as possible. Fluoride is added to toothpastes, to drinking water, because it is believed to improve the strength of the teeth. And if you think about it, teeth are actually bones. The thing is, this isn't actually true. For some people, when the fluoride enters their teeth and their bones, it can make them stronger, but it also makes them more brittle, which means they're like glass. They're more likely to break. They lose that ability to, to bend and to be flexible. There was a very interesting study here that says these results are indicative of a fluoride-induced deterioration of bone quality in humans. And they measured the bone quality in a couple of different ways. We had net bone loss, abnormal mineralization, and collagen formation, or altered microarchitecture. What do these things actually mean? So first of all, net bone loss is literally osteoporosis. The second, abnormal mineralization, means that Instead of the body having this collagen matrix and filling it with calcium, which make these strong, healthy, but also flexible bones, different minerals are being added, including fluoride, and it affects the strength and the quality of the bone. The third, collagen formation, means that that collagen matrix that I described previously isn't able to form correctly. And if the matrix doesn't form correctly, it's not strong. And finally, altered microarchitecture. This would basically mean if you looked at the bones under a microscope, you would see they don't look normal. They don't look like healthy bones. So I would do everything I could to get as much fluoride out of my life as possible. This means change your toothpaste. This means you have to stop drinking tap water. You can either buy bottled water or you can get yourself a filter. A Brita filter isn't good enough. You need to make sure that you get 
a filter that will remove fluoride. You have to check and make sure that it does this because if it doesn't say that it does, then it probably doesn't. Ideal solution is to fit your house with either a very comprehensive filtration system or a reverse osmosis filter. Now I know not everyone can do that. I haven't even done that myself, but just do the best you can. Reduce your exposure as much as possible. And very interesting side note, there are certain medications that are literally made of fluoride. For example, Prozac is basically just sodium fluoride. That's all it is. So if you decide you wanna change that or swap that or come off of it, make sure you talk with an appropriate medical professional because coming off of things like that are serious you really need to do it properly the fifth thing i would do if i had osteoporosis is i would improve my diet now if you've already added the broth added the betaine hcl removed the fluoride you're already well on track you've already improved your diet a lot but what i mean here is try to remove some nutritionless foods and add more foods that have a higher nutritional density. The biggest culprits that you're looking for here, as far as nutritionless food goes, are basically things that are higher in carbs and higher in calories and contain very little or no nutrients. So this is things like fizzy drinks, pop and soda, anything that has refined sugar added to it. So that's things like sweets and chocolate, any highly refined grain products. So this would be things like bread, pasta, even rice. I'm not saying never eat these foods, but we have to make sure the balance is being met with other more nutritious foods so as far as adding more nutrient dense foods we'd be looking at generally animal products are fantastic eggs organ meats you can eat whole food fresh fruits and vegetables ideally you want organic or biodynamic as conventional products are sprayed with pesticides for example glyphosate which is a mineral chelator what this means is the mechanism of action the way this pesticide works is it binds to minerals in the soil which means the crops grow and they aren't able to absorb these minerals from the soil which means they are minerally depleted again you don't have to be perfect i don't eat 100 organic but just do the best that you can having massive excesses of refined sugar and processed carbohydrates deplete many of the important minerals that we need to resolve osteoporosis including calcium vitamin D and magnesium. So you don't have to become like an elitist and only eat raw liver and have 35 eggs a day, but maybe just swap that balance a little bit. Have a little bit less refined carbs, a little bit less sugar and sweets, and maybe have pate twice a week. Maybe have a, a bowl of soup that's made with broth as the base, you know? Don't make it stupidly complicated. Just keep it simple and, and it will work. You don't have to make it super complicated. Number six, I've got a little bonus point for you. The sixth thing I would do if I had osteoporosis, and this is even more important important for women, especially if you are approaching or you're past menopause, is that I would gain and keep as much muscle mass as possible. One of the best ways that you can improve your bone density is daily movement, but also strength training. So I'm personally always aiming for at least 10,000 steps a day. If that's realistic for you, then go for it. But I would also encourage some form of strength training. This doesn't mean you have to become a gym bro and start taking protein powders and lifting like crazy heavy weights. What this means is find a way that you can push your muscles to failure, maybe two or three times a week. It is really hard for women, especially after menopause, to build and gain muscle. So it's really important that you start as soon as possible because it's literally one of the single best things you can do, not only for osteoporosis, but to protect yourself from cardiovascular disease, from neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and dementia. And it's there's literally an equation where the amount of muscle mass that you have is directly correlated to how long you live and the quality of that life. It's one of the simplest equations and it is literally more muscles equal live longer and better. So like I'm saying, don't overcomplicate it, but do something so that you can build and keep your muscle mass. It will help not only with the osteoporosis, but so many other things as well. That is everything I would do if I had osteoporosis. I hope you found this video really helpful and informative. If you have any questions, just leave me a little comment below and I'll get back to you. And if you feel like you're in need of a little bit more help or support with this or any other health issues that you may be facing, please feel free to reach out, shoot me an email, support at williamdickinson.co.uk and let me know you're interested in a consultation and I'll get back to you. That's everything from me. Take care and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.